Well, the season's here. I guess that's the good news. Well, we have the exhibition game on Thursday against uh, the Tritons, and then we open up the regular season on the 10th against San Diego Christian. So uh, we're ready to throw it up and start some basketball here on the Mesa again. What surprises you and what you've seen in preseason practice and what concerns you? Uh, I like what I've seen from the team. You know, we've got great experience, Lee, and, and that always gives a coach comfort. You know, you got uh, Trey Kell Sr., Malik Pope Sr., Devin Watson, fourth year junior, Jeremy Hemsley Jr., Max Holtzel, fourth year junior. So we've got a lot of experience, and that, uh, that makes my job easier because these guys have been through it. They know what they're doing, and it shows on the floor. Coach, you um, uh, obviously play a scrimmage over the weekend, and I know you're living in a little bit of what you talk about, but um, you've had a chance probably to watch the film, I'm assuming, and, and sleep on it a day or two. What, what were your impressions now you've had some time to reflect on it? Did you see anything different, likes, dislikes? You know, the thing I like best, uh, we struggled to score the ball last year, and in a 40-minute scrimmage, we scored 98 points. And uh, the best news in that is we only turned the ball over six times. So when you score 98 points and only turn it over six times, that's a pretty good start. I take that number all year. So I don't know if that'll happen, but uh, we rebounded the ball well. I think we out-rebounded them by 15. So from a statistical standpoint, about as good as you could hope. And we played the right way. I thought the kids really shared the ball. They played with each other well. And I played all 10 players, and uh, they all belong to be out. They all deserve to be out there. They're all good enough to play. So now it comes to me to decide what order I want to play them and how many minutes each of them will deserve as we move forward. Do you have a sense that maybe you're Yeah, the rotation is interesting. You know, Nolan Narain is probably the guy that played more than I thought he would. And uh, that's a basis of, you know, Cam's a big man at 7'2", and so we're running a lot. So he's moving up and down the floor. So my decision was, when I took him out, did I want to move Malik Pope to uh, the five-man spot, the center, while he got some rest, or play Nolan? And Nolan's played well in practice. He played well in the scrimmage, so he's kind of moved into some of those backup minutes at the five-man. And if he keeps pushing, he may push Cam along even harder. So I'm real happy with what I've seen off the bench uh, from all my players. And the, I guess the biggest surprise would be, you know, Nolan keeps coming and coming. I'm really pleased with him. Coach, how much versatility do you feel you have with this group, whether it's different guys handling the ball at the point or a guy maybe like Pope playing in different spots? Yeah, uh, we're playing multiple positions. Like Malik can play a stretch four, a power forward that steps out and shoots it, or he can move into the block and play the center. I guess the guy that's maybe changed the most is Max Montana. Uh, we played him at small forward to start the game and then moved him to a stretch four, so he's a hard matchup. I think Max hit five threes out of seven shots, and he stretches the defense. Uh, he had four assists to one turnover, so he's seven rebounds, so he had a great stat line. So I'm real pleased with Max, too, his versatility. Uh, obviously, Trey Kell has shown that he can post up as a big guard, which he did on Saturday, and yet he stepped out. He shoots the three again. So, you know, the versatility is obviously great for us and, and hard to prepare for. Where is McDaniels on the learning curve? Jalen is uh, – I'm really happy with Jalen right now. He plays with such a high motor. And when they say high motor, it basically means they play hard all the time. So Jalen plays hard all the time. Uh, he didn't get a lot of rebounds, though he got his hand on a lot of balls. He runs in all the time from the perimeter, attacks the glass. Uh, you know, he, he shot the mid-range jump shot. He's proven he can make the three some in practice. Uh, he's long, and so he's going to be a real contributor this year. I think, you know, the Aztec fans are going to be excited to see some of these new guys. You know, Devin Watson, Jalen McDaniels, the freshman, you know, Jordan Shackle, Matt Mitchell. So we got a lot of new pieces that we're putting out there that the fans are going to see for the first time on uh, Thursday night. How much do um, you think about giving away too much on, on Thursday night and in your opener, knowing that you've got Arizona State on the road in a real big game pretty early in the season, or do you just throw everything out there and, and let it? Maybe yeah, it we're, you know, Mark, we're not running as many sets right now. We're we're playing basketball and. Uh, so when the set plays over, we're doing a better job of maybe getting into just free-flowing basketball. So our spacing's good, and so there's not a whole lot to show. We're just, you know, like I said, once the play's over, we've got the floor spaced, 
We're either throwing it in the post, we're setting spontaneous ball screens with good spacing, you know, we're driving and kicking. And so I think maybe that's the biggest uh, difference between last year and this year is our, it seems like the guys with experience that, that you would think would happen are playing better together as they space the floor. And I think that's what we're doing more of. So you might see less sets and more just basketball. And so I'm happy with where we're at with that. What have you seen from the, the three guard look you've been working with over practice and then in that scrimmage? And how do you sort of envision that going into the season with Kel, Watson, and, and Hemsley? Yeah, they did a real good job together. And I was interested in that because in practice, I like to play Jeremy against Devin or Jeremy against Trey and mix those combinations because Jeremy's going to have to play some point guard. He can't come in and Devin's a point and Jeremy plays no reps in practice. So I was happy that I haven't played them a lot together. I did in the scrimmage and they, they played well together they, with not having a lot of practice experience doing it. So I was interested to see how that went. And so that's a combination whether I start it or play it together, it will be together on the floor, and they did a real good job playing together. How do you approach these exhibition games? What's, what's the goal going in? You just kind of see how players work together uh, in a game situation as opposed to practice? Yeah, like the scrimmage on Saturday, I played it like a game. I didn't have set rotations where at the first time out I brought five new guys in. You know, I left Trey and Devin in for an extended segment. They might have played the first eight or nine minutes out there together because I can see that happening in a game. So, you know, I'm going to approach it, maybe play more guys, but I'm going to use a substitution pattern that's more like a game instead of just trying to mass sub five guys for five guys. You know, I'll give them a more game rotation in it, and I think hopefully that'll help me as I prepare for my first game and help the team is to get a comfort level of when they're going to come out, what minutes they're going to play to start. Coach, how excited are you that your first game is coming up? Or is this just another game in the long career of Dutcher? Yeah, I'm excited. You know, I'm not real nervous right now, but I'm sure when the, uh, when the game, get closer to game time, I'll be nervous to coach my first game. You know, I was uh, surprised I was uh, pretty much seated the whole scrimmage at USC, but that's a, that's a byproduct of the players I have on the floor. I mean, when I have guards out there that can run the show and call plays and they don't need me to stand up and tell them what to do or call a play right away, then that's the best scenario. Let them go out there and play. They know what they're doing. And I told them before we played, uh, and I'll tell them again, you know, this is practice is the classroom, and we're giving you all the answers. Now go out there and take the test. You shouldn't need me to do a lot of stuff during that game. I'll make an adjustment or two, but you have all the answers you need. Go out there and play. And they did a good job of that. And so when you've got veteran guards, then, then coaches can be seated a little more. So I'll see how that goes as the season goes on, if I'm up off the bench a lot or if I've just got a great comfort with my team where I just let them play. What's your biggest question you got to get answered in the next two to three weeks? Uh, probably just the, the question is, can we keep everybody healthy? Because when we're healthy, we're really good. And so everybody's healthy right now. We're getting Techie back off you know, his concussion protocol. So hopefully we'll have him back in practicing this week and we'll have a, a full team. And so that's not only in games, that's practice, you know. Today, we'll probably have to have a manager in there practicing with the team a little bit. You know, we got a guy that's nicked up a little bit, but, you know, so obviously you get better practicing. So if I've only got nine guys practicing and it's that of 10, it makes a difference. So when I get Adam back, uh, Seiko and uh, Techie back, then I'll have a full squad at practice and uh, that'll help us be better as a team. So right now, it's the only concern I have is that we stay healthy. Is Cameron Rooks going to give you a little bit more offense in the post this year and as a big man? Yeah, Cam at seven foot one is is a presence in there. You know, he's done a good job of of carving out his position, getting deep touches, and and getting a lot of offensive rebounds. You know, basketball is so much more a spread sport where four guys are on the perimeter. It used to be played, you'd have two guys on the blocks or a guy at the high post and low post, and so it was a lot more physical. So Cam has done a great job offensive rebounding because he's a lot more around that block. So. I think we're noticing his best presence on the offensive glass. You know, he reaches over, he's strong. Uh, if we throw it in there, he's got a nice jump hook. He gets a good rhythm dribble. So I'm real pleased with where Cam is uh, uh, being productive in the low post. He sets a good job. He does a good job of uh, moving out in ball screen and then rolling in there aggressively. So, you know, I'm real, real happy with what Cam's been doing and hopefully it will continue to show in the games. Is the defense different though because you don't have the explosive jumpers up around the rim? 
Yeah, we're, we're lacking the shot blocker probably, although we've got guys capable of doing it, but not to the level of like a Skyler Spencer who has the all-time Mountain West Conference shot block record. So we don't have that kind of shot blocking, but yet we're big, we're long, so we can contest shots in different ways, maybe just get hands up. And, you know, you watch the NBA now. Is these guys are the elite of the elite. And they drive in there, and there may not be blocked shots, but those guys jump up vertically with their arms up, and there's contact, and the refs aren't calling it as much. If you're vertical, they don't call it. And so guys like Cam and Malik and guy uh, Nolan, they, can, they may not block shots, but they'll have an effect on the shot. If they can just get squared up and leave the feet with their arms back and not foul, then they're hard to score over. Dutch, uh, the rest of the league thinks enough of you guys to be uh, number two finishers. What do you think about that, and what's your team determination level? You know, it's, I, I said it at media day. Uh, I don't care if it's a red out, black out, green out, white out, whatever it is, it's going to be against the Aztecs. So we may be picked second, but uh, I think most of the league feels, you know, that we're the team that they need to beat. So, you know, they may pick a second. We think we're going to win the league. So I want the team to believe in that. So there's a lot of ways to go to do that, but uh, I want them playing with a swagger, walking with a swagger, and get back to Aztec basketball where we're at the top of the league. So that's my greatest hope.